Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a pair of felted slippers. If you've never worn felted slippers before, you are going to love these slippers. And just a warning, you will probably never want to put your foot inside a polyester slipper ever again. Felted slippers are so comfy and so warm, and if you take care of your slippers and you make them in the right way, they're going to last a very long time. It's time to show you how to do this, so let's do let's get into it. It's not hard to do, but it's labor intensive and time consuming. It can take up to six hours to make a pair of felted slippers. So first off, to start with your slipper making, you will need some flat foam. Um, this is called a resist and it will be the hole and space in your slipper. Um, it's kind of difficult to see how it'll work at first, but um, once we get going in this video, you will see what's going to happen. First, I'm going to show you how to make the resist. I'm not going to make it in the video. I'm just going to show you a diagram. It's pretty easy. You want to head to um, Zappos shoe size chart on the Zappos website. I find the size you want to make and you measure that out as a rectangle on a on your phone flat phone. Um, and then you add eight centimeters to the length and you add two centimeters to each side for the width. And then I use a bowl or I eyeball it and draw the corners and then cut it out. If you want to make your resist more quickly, there's an alternative way. What you can do is just put the flat foam on the floor, put your foot on it, and basically just draw around your foot. Uh, maybe make some dots and points where it's approximately four, um, four centimeters on each side all the way around. So today I'm making a pair of slippers that is approximately a size six and a half to seven, um, quite on the small side, but I'm actually going to use my size nine resist. So I'm going to use the measurements on the Zappos site for a size nine, because I'm going to do something a little bit different than I usually do. And I'm going to put the slippers in the washing machine for 15 minutes at the end, maybe another 15 minutes, depending if they need to go smaller. And this is just going to help the slippers um, felt more strongly than I'll be able to felt them with my hands. Um, something about slippers, felted slippers, is that um, the toe will usually fill a hole in the tip of the slipper over time and they will not be of any use and they're difficult to repair and felt slipper making, it's time consuming and quite expensive to buy felted slippers, so um, you want them to last as long as possible. So I'm going to make them bigger. I have found over time that I just prefer to wear the slippers a little bit larger in size as well. Um, and I do feel that if this, there's more space in the toe, it will pill a little bit less. The toe will rub less against the top of the slipper. Um, so that's another reason that they're going to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to leave them a little bit bigger. For these slippers that I'm making, I want them to be a little bit thicker than this pair. So I'm go just going to weigh, weigh this out to see how heavy they actually are. And they have a bottom on them. So we'll just tear that. That is quite heavy. Bottom. So these slippers are about 100 grams, um, which isn't very thick, although I find them super comfortable. But I'm going to go about 150 to 180 grams. Um, I just want them. I just want all my new slippers to be quite thick and nice and toasty warm. So we're going to begin laying out our fiber. If you haven't already, you want to see the video on how to make a piece of felt. It'll just show you how to pull the felt, pull the wool roving apart. Um, I'll just get, do a quick example here. If you want to hold the wool roving gently in your hand, um, about three inches from the top, um, and you want to just grab the top of the fiber and give it a pull, and it'll come off. The looser you hold the fiber and the more gentle you are with your hands, um, the easier it will be to pull apart. 
Um, if you grab the fiber further, further down, you'll get a nice big chunk. And if you pull it right from the tip, you will get a very thin, thin piece. Um, I usually aim for in the middle when laying out the fiber. Uh, it just gives you more control. You can lay it out thicker. It doesn't matter if you go thin or thick. It'll just be, it'll just, you'll finish your slipper at a different time and you'll do less layers or you'll do more layers. Um, so that's pulling apart the fiber and just check out that video. You probably want to make a piece of felt first before you um, try this process, but you don't have to. You can get right into it and it's quite forgiving um, and just follow the process as I'm showing you and your slippers should turn out just fine. Okay, so I have 180 grams for my size nine slipper. Um, what you'll want to do if you have never felted slippers before is to split your wool. Actually, I'll split my wool. Should I split my wool in half? You can split your wool in half. Pretty easy to come apart. Let's twisting a little bit like that. And it's just a little bit easier to use in your hand. It doesn't matter. This one's thicker than this one. Um, just pick one to start with. It doesn't really matter that much. So I like to put my fiber, um, if I'm using a chair, I'll just put it in my lap in front of me here. Um, I've kind of just chucked it on the floor. My floor is pretty clean. Um, and just having it there freely is just nice and easy to use as it kind of comes out onto the slipper. So I'm going to begin by laying my fiber out um, vertically. We're going to lay out even perpendicular layers. I'm going to start laying out. I want to finish on a layer that's vertical, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. Um, so that means I would begin laying out my fiber horizontally first if I want to end on a vertical. I'm not sure why I want to end on a vertical. I just intuitively feel that um, laying out the fibers vertically just feels nice to me. <laughs> So, so what I mean by layers is that we're going to do two sides for each layer. The first side of the layer, I'm going to overlap the edges only by a little bit. You want to lay the fiber out on the slipper as evenly possible and you don't want any gaps. You want to make sure you lay the fiber over the top of the toe area quite well because this is where the toe could pill um, and it needs to be the most durable part of the slipper. The heel also can pill sometimes and also kind of the, the toe area but the sides of the toe. You don't want to get too picky with laying the fiber out um, and filling holes because you can just keep going forever. Uh, you want to move on to the next side um, and it's quite forgiving. So and we're going to do eight layers or more and so the, the slipper is going to get covered. You want to make sure while you're laying it out that there aren't any holes or gaps but you don't have to be too picky. And so I'm going to do the other side. You want to make sure your slippers are far enough apart. You can move them later once it's wet. You want to make sure the slippers are far enough apart so the fiber doesn't stick together. So when I'm laying out my wool I like to work from the bottom up it's easier, the wool doesn't get stuck to it, get, go all over the place. Um, you can kind of do whatever you prefer. You could work from the top down if that works for you as well, but I find the bottom up works best. So I do recommend it. Don't be picky. That's good, good enough. All right, so we have, this is our first layer and our first side on the first layer. So now we're going to take our little Doppler bottle of water and we're just gonna completely soak the slipper. You don't want a waterfall in your project, um, but you do want it quite wet. The whole process is easier and quicker if it's quite wet. It just means that you don't have to keep checking it and it's not gonna stick to your bubble wrap and it won't be so fiddly. I'm just gonna get some soap on there when applying the soap, you want to apply a very small amount of soap. That's kind of a soapy water mixture. And um, yeah, it can get 
quite soapy very quickly and it, it's kind of a mess so you just don't you don't need that like that one like the piece um so what you'll do next is you'll just pat down your project got a little bit excited there first pat it down get the water to fully saturate the fiber and then you can take um, a piece of fabric or felt i find is easiest and you can just give it a little rub um, in a lot of other felting videos, you can apply water to the top and some soap and you can give it a rub. But one day I decided I didn't want to get my hands wet all the time, so I just began using a piece of felt. This part doesn't need to take long. Just give it a rub. You just want the fiber completely wet. You don't want any bubbles in the fiber. Um, you can gently pull up your bubble wrap and check it. Once it looks pretty nice, um, maybe I can show you what that looks like. So it's just quite wet. Um, there's no bubbles in the work. So the resist I've used is a little bit wider in the top. Um, it's an old resist and it doesn't need to be wider. I mean, people's feet are wider in the top than the back. So at some point I made it a little bit wider in the top and you can do that too. Um, but because it is the top, I'm gonna leave it as the top. And so I don't get confused. I'm just gonna flip it from the side. Um, I used to flip it from the bottom, but then that began this top bottom situation. Um, and I also have, because I have the tape at the bottom, um, when I cut the hole, then I won't go through the resist and I can reuse it. Um, I like to just keep the bottom as the bottom. So I'm going to flip it to the side. So you take your bubble wrap off, when, after you flip it, take your bubble wrap off and fold your edges. Begin folding your edges over the resist. You do not want the resist to fold over or curl. Um, the shape that your slipper is as we apply the fiber is the shape your slipper may turn out. So if the resist is folded, then you will have a fold in the fiber and in your slipper and it won't be a slipper anymore. Um, when you're folding over your edges, you just want to make sure they're nice and wet. They're just It's easier to fold over the edges if they're wet. You can just give them a little bit more water. I use my hands to pat it down. Um, I notice a lot of people use their fingers to pat it down like as they're folding it and it sticks to their fingers. Um, so yeah, just apply some more water if needed. So when I fold my edges over, I just like to give it a little pull. You want to make sure as well that the fiber is tight against the resist. Again, not folding it, but tight. If the fiber isn't tight against the resist, um, Basically, it will felt to itself. Um, as we do the layers, if you have edges hanging off the edge, they'll just felt to themselves. Uh, and then you will have just a piece of thick kind of fiber stuck to your slipper, which is totally fine. Um, it won't stop the slipper from being um, less functional or anything, but it might not look so perfect. It has a very neat slipper. Okay, so now we're going to do the fill we're going to do the other side of the slipper. Okay, so next I'm going to lay out the second side of the first layer of my slipper. And I'm going to continue on laying out the fiber horizontally. I'm going to start at the bottom. Um, this time you do not need to do your edges. If you do your edges on this layer, you'll overlap the edges that are currently on there, making it a double edge. And you'll have a double thickness around the sides. So you just want to simply fill in all the gaps. The first layer is easy to see. You can kind of see all the gaps, so you can just go ahead. Um, I am doing the edge on my heel because there is a bit of a gap there. Usually it takes about two, two little pieces on each side. And it does look like I'm doing my edges, but really it's just kind of the ends of the fluff. That's perfectly fine. It's not very thick. You do still want to cover and overlap the fiber so that it has so that's nice and strong. And if you're unsure, you just want to make a piece of felt first um, before you begin this process, just to test and see. You might want to do it a few times before you make your slippers because it is quite the endeavor. Okay, so that's my second side of the first layer. And I'm just gonna give it a spray. Nice and wet for the first layer. Cover it up. You want to make sure the bubble side is down. 
The bubble side down just helps the fibers not stick when you're lifting it up. Um, and then later on in the process, it's going to help the fibers to agitate. The bubbles are a functional part of the felting process, and they do help the um, fibers, <clears throat> excuse me, they do help the fibers intertwine together, and so it is important that the bubble side stays down. So I always split my um, project after I've done a side, because even though we filled in the inside, I still like to fold all my edges over, even if there aren't very many edges. I just want to do everything quite gentle. Um, this process is quite a slow process, um, something you don't need to do quickly, something that can be relaxing. You can put some music on, maybe get a drink or coffee, and you can even get a chair. Grab some friends. That's actually how I began. I was quite overwhelmed by the process when I first learned about it, and so I invited some friends over to make some slippers with so it wouldn't be so scary and we could just have some fun. So that is the first side completed. What you're going to do next is you're going to begin laying out your second layer. Second layer. So we're going to lay our um, fiber out on the edges again. And this time we're going to lay them vertically. We're going to do two sides per layer. I'm going to start at the bottom and just lay my fiber out vertically. There are many ways to make a felted slipper. Um, the way I am doing it is a very, very slow way of making a felted slipper. <clears throat> It's a very controlled way of making a slipper, so that the slipper turns out quite even and smooth when it's completed. Um, there's just a lot of control in this process. So normally when I make a slipper, I love having the inside. I like to use three colors. I like to put an inside color, and then I use the brown as a, I use the brown to separate the colors so that the fibers don't blend together, um, so that the colors stay that color. If I was using orange and blue, the orange would stay orange and the blue would stay blue. Um, no matter what, the, the fiber intertwines and blends together and so the brown will blend with the orange and then the brown will blend with the blue. Um, it actually looks amazing. It looks really nice. It tones down the bright colors and I just love the look of it. So, so you can do whatever you'd like to do. Um, you can get pretty creative with your slipper if you wanted to. If you could think and not get confused by the process, you could put a picture inside the heel so that when you cut your hole you can see the part or whatever you had put inside the smiley face, which is pretty fun. Um, I don't do these things because I'll just get confused about where I'm at in the process and it just, I'll cut the hole where the, the face is, so I just don't bother. Don't bother with creativity. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so first side, second layer. Spray it down. They say you can buy these at the garden store. Um, I never really looked, I just found one online um, on the felting website. Um, in the felting video, I, in the how to make a piece of felt video, I used um, a spray bottle, which you can use if that's all you have. Um, but it does take quite a bit longer. It takes an, an extra hour to process. This is much quicker. So if you're gonna make more and more slippers, um, you'll wanna get one of those. By the end of the process though, you, you might not make more and more slippers. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to flip my project. I'm going to gently lift the bubble wrap, making sure the fiber doesn't stick to it as I peel it off like that. There's a good example. Because I'm vertical, it would be easier to pull the bubble wrap this direction. And I'm just going to flip my edges over the edge. kind of do it as if I'm drawing a picture. I kind of just go around the shape of the slipper, pulling it gently around and patting it down. Okay, so now we're on the second side of our second layer. And now you can't really see where the where the gap is. Um, I don't really look for it. Um, I just have a system that I use, which is where I just don't put anything around my edges for this layer. And I just put about two pieces all the way up um, on each side, I'll just show you. So I start at the heel. I can kind of see a little bit where I've ended. You do want to cover it well. 
So I put one piece in the heel, and next I just move. I put about two pieces all the way up. Nice and even, overlapping. All the way to the top, not covering my edges. I don't aim to cover the edges, I just put it inside. A little more on that heel area is fine. And that looks quite nice. Give it a spray down. So as you add layers to your felt slippers, um, it'll become more wet. You don't need to add as much water every time. You don't want water falling everywhere. Um, if it does get a bit wet, I have a towel behind me. Um, if I'm sitting, I usually put a towel on my lap just in case. Press that water down, give it a smooth over, and then flip. And then we're gonna fold our edges over. Whatever edges there might be. Um, and there's not very many, just a few. <clears throat> okay, so by now we're, we've completed the second layer and you might begin to get confused where you're at or what layer you were on or if you did vertical or horizontal. I started with horizontal so I know, and I just did a vertical layer so now I know I'm on the horizontal layer. Um, something that helps a little bit Something that helps a little bit is just grabbing a little piece of paper and marker and just checking off the layers as you go. You can even rewrite down like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably do about eight layers. Um, so I did the first layer and I put an H for horizontal. Um, and I just check off maybe two checks for doing both sides. You don't need to be that specific. Um, but now I am, and then I did a vertical layer. And so I'll just make a V and I'll just check that off because I did that. Um, and then I will write on the next layer. I'm on the third layer, so I'm going to be doing horizontal. So I'll just write an H for that and that's where I'm at. Um, if you forget, to write it down on every layer, then that kind of messes it up. Um, if you do mess it up, you can kind of guesstimate where you're at. Um, you can tell if you've laid it, the fiber out vertically or horizontally by pinching the fiber, and you can kind of see the direction that the fiber is pulling. So if I lift this up, which is hard to see in the video, um, I can tell my fiber is going vertical. Okay, so now I'm on the third layer and I'm going to begin laying out my fiber horizontally, um, and I'm gonna cover my edges, and then I'm going to flip it and fold my edges over, and then I'm gonna fill it in horizontally to complete that layer, spray it down. Um, and then I'm gonna continue on the fourth layer and I'm gonna continue on until all my fiber is gone, making sure I end on an even layer. We always need to have perpendicular even layers um, so, that the felt slip so that the slipper will shrink evenly in all directions. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so I'm finally on my last two layers. One's going to be horizontal, and then the final layer is going to be vertical. And for my last two layers, I'm going to use this um, green corridor fiber. It's the same type of fiber as this I used for the slippers. And I'm just going to lay my fiber out the same as I would for all the other layers. So I am now on the horizontal layer, and I'm just going to lay, because I don't have a lot of this color, um, I kind of spread it out evenly. I'm going to lay it as thin as possible, um, this time just because I know I'm running low on the fiber and I need to do two layers on each slipper. Okay, so that completes part one. That is the end of the um, first process where we have laid out all our fiber. We haven't actually felted the slippers yet. Um, we've just basically laid out our fiber. Um, so, so what you can do next, um, let's have a break. But also, before we start felting the fiber, we just wanna give the slippers a massage. If you laid the fiber out quite neatly and quite close to the resist, and it's looking quite nice and it's not kind of sagging off the edges. Um, you can skip this part. So that concludes the first part of the felt making process. So far we have laid out our fiber. By this time you might want to add a design to your slipper, but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video because there are so many techniques you can learn. In the thumbnail of the video there is a photo of a slipper that is pastel and colorful and it's a lot of fun and you can do this too. I, I designed this fiber myself but you can buy artisan fiber online. There's so many different fun colors and different blends. And I basically just laid the fiber out vertically like I would a normal layer, and that's how I achieved this result. Once you are done with your design, the slipper is ready to be felted. And so we will do that in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed the process so far. Hit like if you like the video and subscribe so you can be notified about the next part in the process, and I will see you there.